What's up, Captains? Welcome to another episode of the Captain's Lifestyle Podcast. As you can see, I'm recording this intro chilling in my hotel room in Richmond, Virginia. I'm here for the next week for a resilience seminar hosted by Mark England, who is the co-founder of Enlifted. I interviewed him on my podcast um, a while ago. Actually, that episode hasn't gone live yet, so uh, disregard that. But uh, yeah, here for a resilience seminar. So doing things like breath work, cold exposure, jujitsu, mindset work, and even shooting. So this is going to be a, a good few days with a lot of good people breaking down stories and self-limiting beliefs and ultimately becoming more resilient. And uh, if you follow my Instagram, I was recently in Austin, Texas. That was a fantastic seminar put on by Aubrey Marcus with Fit for Service. And this particular one was Road to Union, learning all about relationships and communication and love and connection and things like that. So that was fantastic. I, I'm going to record a podcast on what I learned from uh, that weekend, this past weekend. It was amazing stuff. A lot of major <laughs> life breakthroughs came from that and uh, it was fantastic. So that's where I just was in Austin, Texas. I'm now here in Richmond for the next week. And then after this, I will go back to Austin for a, uh, another coaching seminar via the Strong Coach. So we're doing the uh, Strong Coach Summit, which is in Austin, Texas as well. And that's for me to dial in my personal business, the Captain's Lifestyle Program, and basically to become a better coach and put in structure and system so I can scale and grow even further. So just a little intro about my travels so far. And uh, speaking of travels, as you can see, if you're watching the YouTube video, I'm rocking my lamb's beanie and my lamb shirt. And what you can't see is my lamb's underwear uh, because I just got off of the flight. Like I mentioned, I just got in here to Richmond. And every single time I fly, I wear my lamb's clothing because as I hope you're familiar with by now, especially when traveling in airports or on airplanes is when you're just being bombarded by a lot of EMF. I just put on my Instagram story today, I got a new EMF meter that you can measure radio frequencies. And uh, in the plane and in the airport, really, it it's at a one, which is pretty high to the top. And that's, that's like when you're not using your own personal device. If you're on your cell phone or laptop, whatever, that spikes way up. So uh, when traveling, I always wear my lamb's clothing because as if you heard my podcast with the founder and CEO of Lambs, uh, Arthur Menard de Calange, there's a lot of negative side effects that come from EMF exposure uh, because it increases oxidative stress, causes a whole host of issues like brain fog, irritability, trouble sleeping, uh, fatigue, headaches, like, and those are just the immediate symptoms. If left untreated or uh, you get exposed to this chronically, high exposure over longer periods of time, that can even lead to things like cancer, Alzheimer's, dementia, uh, like you name it, a lot of things can result from EMFs. Uh, what I've noticed personally when traveling is I don't get a lot of that inflammation like I used to. Even on long flights, you know how like your your legs would swell up on like uh, cross cross country flights. That does not happen anymore because oxidative stress increases inflammation and increases stress. When you block all that stuff, you no longer get that stress. And I also found that I'm much more calm and relaxed when traveling, even if there's like, you know, travel delays or whatever, because it can be a hassle to travel, especially nowadays with all these ridiculous mandates and holdups and what have you. I've noticed myself uh, being a lot more calm and centered uh, with the, the EMF clothing on. You do have to get patted down when you go through uh, TSA airport security, but it's worth it because you're not getting bombarded by all of those x-rays and EMS from the machines or throughout the airport or the airplane. So to get the hookup on Lambs gear, you can use code Captain Morgan at getlambs.com. The links will be in the description or the show notes of this podcast. So get yourself the hookup on Lambs gear. This episode will be a little bit different. So I'm not doing the interviewing. I am being interviewed by my friend, Ron Jordan. Uh, we did this interview a few months back, probably about six months now. 
And I wanted to release this episode after my interview with Gary, because I know I'm going to be getting a lot of new listeners to my podcast. And I wanted to give you guys uh, at least a brief general understanding of my background, what it is that I do. And I think that this interview that I had with Ron on his podcast, the stars podcast is a good summary of me. Obviously there's a lot more that that goes into me besides a one hour long podcast, but I think uh, for everybody who is just tuning into the Captain's Lifestyle podcast, this will be a good summary. And uh, Ron is a fellow B Friends holder. That's actually how we uh, we came to interact was through B Friends, and that's all another reason why I wanted to put this out after my uh, interview with Gary. Because if you not are not already familiar, B Friends is a very tight community, and uh, I want to promote his podcast, what he's doing as much as possible. Uh, so. If you guys enjoyed my interview with Gary, you're for sure going to enjoy this interview. You're definitely going to enjoy everything that Ron's got going on uh, on his podcast as well. So uh, I think we'll leave it at that. Without further ado, let us dive into today's repurposed interview with Ron Jordan on the Stars podcast. Let's get it. Hey guys, welcome back. This is Ron Jordan over at Stars Podcast coming out of Rosinante Studios in Slippery Rock, Pennsylvania. Today we have coming into us is Captain Taylor Morgan. He's a high performance health coach. He's got the 4321 method. He's all about that sleep lifestyle. Uh, I can't believe that somebody so focused on sleep can be so damn successful. Uh, how does it happen? Welcome to the show, Taylor. Ronald, what's up, man? Thanks for having me on. Heck yeah. Yeah, uh, to answer your question, I guess that is the only way to really be successful is to focus on your sleep. And I guess we should first define success because you see all these people out there who are quote unquote successful, but what is that success? Like, is that success for you? Like, how do you define success? For me personally, it's happiness plus excellence. So excellence, meaning you're constantly striving to improve yourself, those around you and the environment. And happiness means that you have to enjoy the way that you do that thing. You have to enjoy the life that you're living. AKA happiness does not equal money and fame. Like that can absolutely come along with it if that's what makes you happy. But working yourself into the ground, which is what I see a lot of entrepreneurs doing for the sake of just having more money is not the answer. Yeah, that seems to be a lot of the the hustle and bustle is to after the almighty dollar instead of uh, that true, the true why of why you got into it in the first place is because you thought money would make you what happy. So what are we after? We're after happiness, really, you know, in order to but whenever you're in that grind, and you're you're, you think that your carrot at the end of the stick is money. Like, how do you combat that whenever you're talking with some of your not to like dive totally into what your your day to day is there, but like, how do you how do you approach that conversation with these highly successful, quote unquote, uh, on the money side, entrepreneurs and say, are you truly successful? Well, you just got to put up a bunch of posters like the ones that you got behind you find the joy in the journey, you know, um, yeah, just, just getting them to realize that nothing is going to matter if they're not happy in the end. Like you can have as much money as you want. You can have as, as many material things as you want. You can, you know, you can do whatever, but if you're not happy, it, it's not going to matter. Like if you're on a beach somewhere in Costa Rica, sipping your martini with 10 hot models beside you with you know you pull up in your ferrari but you're not happy inside like you go home to nothing like what what is the point of that so um in where is it yeah that book own the day own your life by aubrey marcus there's a, a really powerful uh, point in there and he goes over he takes this from someone else it's not his original work but the top five deathbed regrets and the one that every single male patient that this nurse cared for, every single one said that they had wished they had let themselves be happier. And notice the phrasing there, let themselves be happier. Because on their deathbeds, 
in their old age and wisdom, they had then realized, unfortunately, when it was too late, that happiness was a choice all along. And it was the only choice. Like that is the path that people should be on, not whatever else. Like money is absolutely a part of that. Everybody needs money. It's not a bad thing to want to make more money as long as you're happy doing it and that it's going to bring you happiness in the end. And I think just people have it backwards. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Aubrey Marcus and the on it on it brand themselves. They've yeah. I mean, he's since parted from from on it themselves, but Aubrey has always been somebody that I've looked to when his insight in in perspective is so interesting and his ability to deep dive and he does the work and goes and talks to people um like the deathbed situation he he seeks out that that info um and god that's the first that's the number one really yeah let me let me just grab it real quick yeah for sure because you always hear about like they all the, the the regrets are not spending enough time with family or not you know that that connection piece they never say well i don't want to say they never because i've never done the study but so i i got it right here i had it bookmarked uh because it's i refer to it quite frequently mm -hmm. so the name of the the woman who did the it wasn't like a scientific double blind placebo like peer-reviewed study she just did a i don't know what it was but her name is brawny ware and she was uh, uh, a nurse who, oh, she wrote a book on the top five deathbed regrets. And uh, the top three, in no particular order, but I wish I hadn't worked so hard was one <laughs> of them. So, you know, the common phrase, nobody on their deathbed wish they had spent more time at the office is so true. Like, mm. you don't need to be working more. You need to be enjoying life, which obviously hard work is a part of being able to enjoy life, but work for the sake of work should not be your goal. Outsource and hire people as much as possible. And that goes into Tim Ferriss's four hour work week, which is another yep. fantastic book. Uh, and the next up, I wish I had stayed in touch with my friends. So uh, again, that kind of goes into the happiness level because it doesn't matter how much success quote unquote, you have, if you don't have the friends and the relationships to enjoy the fruits of that success with, um, and then the happiness one, like I mentioned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the truth too. And I've, I've tried to do this more and more often is just reaching out to my buddies, just saying, Hey, how are you doing? How are things going? How are the kids, you know, just reaching out and getting those touch points. And I, I want to seem, I want to be genuine in it because I am authentically being genuine and I want to know how things are going, but it's funny how little reciprocity there is. Yeah. I, Do you notice that or is it just me? Am no, I absolutely. <laughs> I'm, I'm the exact same way. And I need to, I will get better at doing this too. Notice how I, I made that switch from want to, to need or need to I'm going to. Yeah. And yeah. I, this is a little tangent, but I, I do this to, to my clients all the time. Like your language matters. What you say matters what you say subconsciously your brain understands that and just that making that little switch to i want to start getting better at reaching out to friends i'm not going to fucking do that if that's oh can i cuss by the way I, I yeah yeah so. you're totally okay. fine okay um <laughs> yeah so if if you phrase it that way any goal you have if you say i want to i should i wish that's never going to get done like how long have you been saying you want to dot 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 go do that thing that you know you should be doing instead reframe it instantly just like i did to i am going to and right now i'm literally writing it down to reach out to friends and so even just that tiny little language shift you might think that it doesn't matter and people tell me all the time like oh taylor like lay off you know like it's just <laughs> like no motherfucker like it really matters it, it matters. really does um it matters uh, so much that it can change the entire perception of what you say. Every it's just, it, it really does matter. Yeah. So going back to what we were saying, I completely lost track going down that tangent. What were, what were we talking about? No, just staying in touch with friends. And then you were saying outsource and they were trying oh. to not work so hard. And we were going over the Bonnie Ware uh, nurse top five deathbed regrets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I was saying I, I do experience the same thing because when I do reach out to 
to people it, it seems like like there's a little interest and then if we don't get something scheduled then it kind of dies off and then i usually don't hear back from them um and i think just a lot of people are so caught up in their own thing which is true and i think a lot of people don't yet realize that cultivating these relationships is the goal like that is what is important right right um and so i think there just needs to be more awareness around that which th there's nothing wrong with writing this down and like scheduling a notific notification to come up on your phone saying hey reach out to this person today like that might seem like fake and staged or whatever but it's not like you're actually putting in the genuine effort to make that connection and just keep doing that even if you don't get anything back in return you know always just give 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 without the intent to receive yeah and that's what i that's what i go into it with as well um is just me setting the intention for the alarm is the part that matters yeah um and then whatever happens in that exchange if if we get if we get that connection back awesome if not I'm glad that I reached out anyhow, because there's a story that I refer to every now and again. It doesn't come up very often, but I'm glad that it is now is this. I can't, I can't remember exactly where I heard it. I would assume it's on a podcast somewhere out there. But this woman was going through a grocery store and she saw somebody that she had recognized, but was really busy and then just decided not to say hello and went about her day, went, finished, checked out, went home, goes checks the uh the newspaper a couple couple days later and there was an obituary for that woman at that grocery store so you just never know when that time is going to come um for for people around you that you have either interacted with have cared for had issues with whatever um and then if you had issues with it and you didn't reach out you know you never have that closure too so like those are things to consider um, whenever you're, whenever you're trying to make those connections back to, uh, what we were talking about there. So also, uh, a very impactful quote from Robin Williams, and I'm going to butcher it. I don't remember it exactly, but sure. it's everyone is going through something that you have no idea, like what's going on. Um, I really wish I remembered the exact quote, but it, it's, it's essentially that like everybody yeah, like is struggling everybody's with doing that. stuff. Yeah. And you have no idea what's going on. Like even the happiest people like Robin Williams, seemingly one of the happiest people sure. in the world. And he commits suicide because he was depressed. Mm -hmm. And that just goes to show that sometimes the people who are hurting the most are trying to give everybody else the most because they know how it feels to feel that way. Oh yeah. But unfortunately, you can't really pour from an empty cup. So it got to the point to where he gave all that he had to give and he wasn't, you know. So that's just an unfortunate wasn't situation fulfilled at that point. Yeah. Yeah. So where does your deep dive into this introspective persona like wh where does that come from? Because I know you have some some background in the military and going through that, I, I could only imagine because I don't have service, uh, you know, experience in my background, but I do have a lot of friends that have gone to the service and have come back and are very similarly situated to you in terms of like their mentality about life. Um, it, it becomes simplified for a, for a lot. Um, is that where it comes from? Or is it even earlier than that? Yeah, well, that's absolutely a part of it. Um, I get what you're saying about the simplistic standpoint, because once you're and I don't want to just say blanket term military because there's so many different, well, there's different branches. And then within those branches, there's different mm -hmm. jobs that you can do. Of you could be a, a, you know, a desk clerk just sitting behind a computer all day, which is basically just a nine to five job, but for the government. So there's that side of the military or there's like the, the infantry side, the special forces side. I love that you brought is, that up. Yeah, because a lot of people don't understand. They just think military and like, oh, everybody's on the front lines fighting. No, I'm really glad shit. that you brought that up. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's completely different. So um, I personally was a machine gunner in the Marine Corps, so not a, a desk job by any means. Um, and once you go through something as challenging like that, um, and then more specifically, there are some other challenges in the Marine Corps. 
that I went through almost nothing. And currently I have faced nothing in the civilian world that is even close. Um, and so once you understand that things do become a lot more simple because you understand that you can handle anything that comes up. And this isn't everybody who goes through that. I, I, I believe my strongest asset is my mindset and just the ability to understand and to push through whatever is going on, just knowing that I will get it done, like no matter what. Um, and so that, yeah, there's been nothing physically more challenging that I've had to encounter in the civilian world. Um, so that's part of it. But then also while I was in, uh, I was a heavy drinker as with almost every single Marine you meet mm -hmm. and uh, had some, some trouble with that. I wouldn't define myself as an alcoholic, but it was like every single weekend, like I was getting hammered and yeah. like, you know, driving back to base drunk, very dangerous. I don't even know how I made it back sometimes. Like so, one, one time I remember my friend had to wake me up. I was in my car, uh, in the parking lot, my car was running oh. and he woke me up at like 6am, like, uh, like asking if I was okay. And I had no recollection of how I got back to base which is crazy because when you drive onto a, a military base, there's guards and they ask you for your ID and they only let you buy if you're like coherent. Obviously, if you're drunk, they're going to pull you aside and take you to jail, the military jail. So right. to this day, I have no idea how I how I passed and, and got back, but whatever. And so one night I was extra drunk and um, long story short, ended up breaking my ankle. There's a whole crazy story behind oh that. Oh my God. And that was like a wake up call that that was one of the major shifts that got me to wake up and to basically change paths because I was what I considered to be, quote unquote, healthy. And anybody from the outside looking in would have thought that I was healthy. Um, and that's another thing we could get into is just society's definition of health, I think, is completely wrong. Um, and so once that catalyst point happened, I began to take this deep dive into all things lifestyle optimization and doing everything I could to maximize my potential. So that's the short story of how how this journey began. Is that how you got into the CrossFit too? Is just that real focus on health? Well, I was in CrossFit before. Okay. Um, but so after the Marine Corps, I became a, a full-time CrossFit coach ended up being the head coach of the biggest CrossFit gym in Saudi Arabia. Uh, and it was when I was there when I realized that money cannot buy happiness because I, so they offered me that head coaching role in Saudi Arabia. I also had an offer uh, from the Cayman Islands and they even flew me out to the beautiful Cayman Islands, like had me coach in the gym for mm -hmm. a week. It, it was, it was amazing. The people were amazing. The gym was great. Beaches were even better but I turned it down solely because Saudi Arabia paid me more money. And I, my mindset at the time was, okay, I just finished four years in the Marine Corps, hating life for shitty pay. I can go to the, a state of the art gym in Saudi Arabia, a place I know I'm not going to like, but make more money. I can handle that for two years. It's supposed to be a, a two year contract. Okay. So that was my mindset. Literally just took it for the money. And uh, <laughs> come to find out that was just absolutely not the case. I enjoyed the first, you know, maybe two months because the gym was state of the art. Best gym I've ever seen. Probably the best gym I ever will see. It was amazing. Um, two story, like huge warehouse, every piece of equipment you can imagine. I basically had the whole thing to myself when I would go work out in the morning. It was amazing. And then I was training for like four hours a day. So it was, it was like heaven for, for a training facility. Uh, but I was not fulfilled with what I was doing. The people there in general are almost the exact opposite of how I want to live. Just their whole mindset around health and wellness is just starting to emerge there. So they're a very unhealthy population in general. They have horrible sleep schedules, stay out super late. Um, work very stressful jobs that they don't like, but they work there because they get paid a lot of money because their mindset is all about more money. 
and they smoke, they drink coffee way late into the night. Like there's just, they eat bad food. And so it's just opposite of how I want to live. Not only that, but their views on the environment and other people, I think are horrible. Like they have zero regard for the environment. On multiple occasions, I saw people just flicking their cigarette butts out to the street. Like there's trash overflowing from dumpsters. It smells like garbage. Like people just don't care about, it seems like themselves, other people, animals, there are stray cats everywhere or the environment. And so I, I just, that on top of uh, some disagreements that we had in the gym as me being head coach, I was just, I can't do this. And that's what made me finally realize, okay, I'm not an employee. I'm an entrepreneur. I need to start my own damn business and actually make a better impact. And so that's when the captain's lifestyle was born. So from, from that, that experience though, being in Saudi Arabia and seeing their lifestyle and seeing everything in it is pushing towards like that unhealthy lifestyle. Is that how you came up with that four, three, two, one method is that where did, was that like the initial brainchild at the, mm. the captain lifestyle or was that, are we moving forward more? Yeah, that? no, the, the four, three, two, one 30 method came after the captain's lifestyle program that came once I was starting to simplify everything that I had learned over the past seven years at the time uh, about sleep, because I, I understood that sleep was the most important thing that a human being can do for overall improved health, happiness, and productivity. And so I wanted to distill that in something that is uh, rememberable and actionable, because there's so much that you can do for sleep. And if I tell you everything that you can do for sleep, you're not going to remember any of it. And so I wanted there to be this clear, concise thing. Okay. Numbers, people resonate easily with numbers and acronyms as well. Uh, so I just, I came up with like the most important things that you could do before bed to ensure a good night's sleep. And so that's what, that's how the 432130 method started. Got it. Got it. Now, whenever you talk about sleep and everything that happens metabolically, um, it's unbelievable the amount of recovery that can happen with a good night of sleep. Well, that is where all of the recovery happens. Yeah, People, it's, like, I'm just saying like the, the amount, like you could go to bed feeling like a truck hit you, get a good <laughs> night of sleep and really feel okay in the morning. Yeah, well, that that's literally where all the recovery happens. Like people yeah. think that going to the gym, you get stronger by working out. You don't. You actually make yourself weaker by working out. Your muscles are breaking down mm -hmm. while you're working out. You get stronger when you recover from that, which is when you sleep. So specifically, deep sleep is when your, your body repairs itself, is when you release testosterone, HGH. So these guys who are going to the gym, killing themselves, and then like, you know, the college days, for example, they're, they're having rages on the weekends, like messing up their sleep, like, oh, you're yeah. actually making yourself weaker for those, those days, not to mention everything that's going on with the brain, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, the amount of chemicals going and saturating that brain are pretty incredible at, at mm -hmm. that age, especially. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, God, could you could you imagine like the guys who really buckle down though in those college years and understand the importance of listening to their coach? Those are the, those are the like top level athletes though. You know, the ones that are getting the sleep and getting the, the proper amount of nutrition and all of the lifestyle changes that have to happen to be an elite athlete um, are significant. I mean, you, you're talking, everything has got to be dialed. If, yeah, if you want to perform at that level. Yeah. Like, and I mean, and, at that point, if you're in college and you're trying to go pro or you're trying to do something with that, I mean, you should, you should totally be optimizing whatever you possibly can, especially if you're like on a full ride or something just to stay healthy, to keep it. And even if you're not trying to become like a competitive athlete, people mm -hmm. think that they can, you know, quote unquote, get by living the lifestyle that they're living sacrificing their sleep, eating whatever they want, you know, just kind of going through the motions. Well, yeah, of course you can get by you can get by doing whatever the hell you want for 70 years. And then you die of a chronic disease. 
So if that's the path you want to go down, not being happy with what you see in the mirror with your physique, not being happy with your mental state, with stress and your mood or whatever it is, not being happy with your both mental and physical performance in whatever it is, you know, being able to play with your kids, you know, go on a hike on the weekend, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You can get by doing whatever you want, but you're not going to like the way you're living. So if your goal is to just be fine and get by, keep doing what you're doing. But if you want to thrive, you got to make these changes. Yeah. It's all about quality of life, isn't it? Like how many options do you want during the day? Do you want to be able to do whatever you want? Or do you want to only be able to do things that can fit a wheelchair or take care of somebody who's on one floor because you can't go up steps because you get winded? Mm. Um, the, you know, those are the types of things that you have to start to contemplate if you don't have a high quality of life uh, in terms of, uh, of, of health. So you did say something back a couple minutes ago about what our definition of health healthy is. Um, I guess, what is your definition of healthy? I'm, I'm curious. Yeah, good question. And I've been, I've tried to put this in a, like a clear, <laughs> concise statement. It's very difficult. I've asked some of my health mentors and, and former coaches, and they struggle with it as well. So there's, there's no like one clear, concise statement that I have as of yet. But I would say in general, health to me is, and I'm talking real, like actual health. It means taking care of yourself first and foremost. So, and the, there's a lot of categories in that. So sleep, mindset, nutrition, water, exercise, supplements, biohacks. And within all those, like I, you, I said, water. Okay, it's not just drinking water. It's drinking quality water. So understanding, going on to ewg.org website and looking up what contaminants are in your tap water and then filtering those out and getting a quality water source. And then for nutrition, it's not just, you know, eating what you think is healthy, like actually taking a DNA test and saying, okay, what did my ancestors eat? I should probably be following this, this, and this type of diet and then getting a, a food sensitivity test and then following that. And then environmental toxins. Like right now I'm wearing uh, an EMF blocking shirt and this EMF blocking necklace. So understanding the effects that electromagnetic frequencies have on things like brain fog and cellular damage and um, erectile dysfunction, even in men. And so there's so many different, like nitty gritty things that people just don't understand. They understand like, okay, yeah, nutrition is important, exercise, they need to drink water, but they don't understand really like what goes into those things. And so I think it's that first and foremost which there's obviously a lot of different rabbit holes to go down. And then actually, I would say first and foremost, it's the quality of your relationships. The Harvard, well, Harvard, which I'm sure you, everybody's heard of, mm -hmm. they did a, a happiness study where they followed, I think it was like 70 men over the course of their whole entire lives. And what they found was that the single biggest correlating factor to those who lived long, healthy, fulfilling lives was not whether or not they smoked or what their diet was or whatever. It was the quality of the connections that they had with other people, significant, you know, mainly their significant other, but also friends and family. And if you have a solid relationship that trumps almost everything, like even yesterday, I was talking with a client who was asking about, um, eating before bed. And I recommended that he should intermittent fast because he's trying to lose weight. And, uh, he asked me some questions about meals. And then I started telling him all these like biohacking things. And then I remembered that he's married with kids. And then I changed, I corrected myself. I was like, look, man, if you like, forget everything that I said, if you would rather have a meal, sit down, talk with your family, don't worry about anything that I said. Like have that meal, enjoy that time because that trumps everything else. And so I think the connections, meaningful connections with family and friends and loved ones is most important. And then on top of that, you can enhance that by being the healthiest version of yourself by doing all these other things That's and being happy, stuff right there. of course. I'm so glad that you pivoted with him 
with that client and and just said, you know what? You took it at you took some empathetic steps. And and that's what I love from a really good coach is you're able to then say, like, you know what? Optimally for your body and that goal, this is what you should do. But optimally for your health, this is what you should do. Because yep. you're you're dedicated to your family more than you're dedicated to this like super healthy, optimal biohacked lifestyle. And that's good. Mm -hmm. And you were, and like, you nailed that. That's awesome. I'm glad that you did that. And that's what, that's the type of work that you're doing. That's fucking amazing. Well, thank you. And I think the, the best coaches are the ones who are not afraid to admit that they were wrong. Like, not that I was necessarily wrong because technically sure. like what you said for your body, like technically, like this is the optimal way, but mm -hmm. then ultimately what's going to help your body even more is if you have these quality connections. Yes, sir. So not sacrificing that. Yeah. But you like, ultimately, you know, in the back of your head, like, no, I probably shouldn't have three pieces of cake and double spaghetti and meatball, but yeah. like, let's enjoy the family time because that's really important. To, I mean, you're a dad. I'm a dad. Like that's important. I'm not a dad. Oh, I thought you, you were. No, I saw I, not, in your, not that I, I know your, of. Do you know something that I don't? <laughs> I saw on your Instagram that you were getting ready for a father son thing and for baseball. And I just assumed that was with my father. He's 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 killing it. He still plays baseball. OK, gotcha. Yeah. OK, but anyhow, so I'm, I'm a dad and I understand like that that family time is like mad important to me. Um, and, you know, I don't know how much you followed along with what I've been doing this summer, but with the hundred K, like there was a lot of time spent away from my family, uh, with training and, and doing that. But ultimately like it came back to what are you dedicated to? Like what, and it's okay to have seasons in your life where you're dedicated to other things, you know, because ultimately you, you just want to have that happiness in your life. And if you have those relationships with your significant other and your children in a way that you've had open communication and said, Hey guys, like, look, I love you so, 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 so much. But for me, I need to do this for, for some happiness as much as I want to support you and everything that you have going on, because we will do that too. Like I need me too. And well, that's you, okay because you, you frame that to, you got to fill your own cup before you can fill theirs like that yeah. robin williams example you used yeah and you can frame that as i need to do this so that i can better serve you because i will not be fulfilled therefore not being able to contribute if i don't go out and do this yep right and so it it, it can all tie in and i just want to mention one other thing about health is that no healthy person has ever or will ever die from any sort of chronic illness. Healthy people don't die from obesity. Healthy people don't die from heart disease. Healthy people don't die from cancer. Healthy people don't die from this crazy thing that happened the past two years. Healthy people do not die from those illnesses. They die from natural causes of, of just getting old and you know, maybe getting hit by a bus or falling off a cliff or these acute things, not some chronic lifestyle condition, which is caused by inflammation over many years. So I, yeah, I just wanted the, to clarify that. No, for sure. And I, I'm glad that you did. And the inflammation has been a huge, huge factor in, in my, my entire journey, the whole inflammation story of uh not story but rather like so i was on the ketogenic diet for quite some time did the intermittent fasting and and did all of that and then the inflammation did it just it goes away um, whenever i got rid of a lot of the um like the flowers and the sugars and all of that stuff like it was it was impressive the amount of i mean i lost 35 pounds in no time no time nice. and it was like holy shit this is real yeah, it, op it opened up my eyes to to uh, like I was listening to uh, Dr. Rhonda Patrick, Peter Atia, mm -hmm. Dom D'Agostino, mm -hmm. you know, all all of those, quote unquote, gurus at the time of, of, you know, the ketones and all of that. I was like, I was in a whole way and understanding the, the inflammation piece. And you're so right. And I, I fear that 
it just doesn't get enough play or people don't quite understand it because they just take an Advil and they're good to go. But it's like, <laughs> dude, like all of that pressure is still there. It's still on you. you so know, the pressure let, let me still give there. you, <laughs> let me give you a good analogy that I, I say all the time with, uh, with um, painkillers like that NSAIDs. So if you feel a pain in your foot, okay, there's, there's two courses of action. One, you could take a painkiller to tell the pain to go away. Say, shut up, pain. I'm going to take this, this pill. Or you could take off your foot and <laughs> not take off your foot, take off your <laughs> shoe and examine like what, what's going on in here. Uh, and then you dump out your shoe and turns out there's a rock in there that was causing that pain. And Oh, my cat just opened the door. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so yeah, you take off your shoe. There's a, a pebble in there that was causing the pain. And so you just dump it out. So there was no painkiller needed at all. You just take out what was causing the problem. And so Western medicine in general, of course, there's some quality Western medicine practitioners, but in general, Western medicine is the first option. They just give you this pill. You have this pain here, take this pill. They don't try to find out what's going on. They don't spend any time trying to look out what the root cause is. Here, this pill, it's easy. You take it, you feel better. Yeah, you feel better, but the pain is still there. You're just masking it, covering it up. The holistic approach that I decided to take, which is what I believe is the, uh, I believe is the, the best possible way, Western medicine is really good for acute injuries and illnesses. Uh, like if you get in a car accident, you know, and you break your leg of course, go to the hospital. Like if you come to me, there's nothing I can do to fix your broken leg. Like you have to go get that fixed. Mm. Um, but yeah, going back to the holistic approach, we take off the shoe, see, okay, what is causing this? What, what is cause, how did that rock get in there in the first place? And how can we prevent that from happening in the future? And this goes into the six pillars of optimized human performance that I teach, which are mindset, and brain health, sleep, communication and relationships, nutrition, exercise, and biohacking. And then once you understand at least the basics in all those categories, there's not much that you'll get sick from. So the six pillars, that's what you're, I love, I love all the number. You have all the numbers. <laughs> it, I, I feel like, like a, it just a, makes a, it easier. It does. And I've always said that too, like all of these, because they're just as you were trying to explain what is healthy, it's so, it's so macro that it's hard to get it into the, it's this three words, mm -hmm. you know, but whenever you can say, you know, six pillars, people can point to that and, and have a rough idea uh, what six things are. And then they spider out. I, I just think that it's a, it's a genius way to think about um, just the way to, sort the columns, if you will, mm -hmm. is, is, is the way I like to explain that because there's so much information out there and people like yourself to be that conduit, like you're the filter, you know, you like, it goes through your ears, your brain. And then you're like, okay, these are the things that you should probably pay attention to. Like, yes, it's optimal to have three tablespoons of this and blah, blah, blah. But let's be realistic. Like you, you're a human that's, yeah it's obviously not going to work out that way. So let's get it to a point where it'll work for you. And I'm sure that you go through this with your clients too, is like, whenever you're talking to them, it's, it's always, this is optimal, but what can we do to get you to optimal? Like immediate, let's get some quick wins. Um, what are some quick wins that you like to do with your clients? Just maybe one or two. Yeah. Well, first I just want to bring up that that point that you mentioned, there's the optimal state, and then there's what you're actually going to do. Like New Year's resolutions, for example, would it be amazing if you were perfect the whole rest of your life? Like you make a New Year's resolution to never eat cookies again. Okay, that might be great. But are you actually going to do that? I think that's why so many huge goals fail is because especially around New Year's, time when people have all this, you know, motivation, and they're like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go to the gym every single day. And then 
gym membership spike and then February comes around and there's a huge drop off. It's like, okay, well, it sounds like you overcommitted. So instead of trying to do everything that you can all at once, let's focus on what you can do now. So if your goal is to work out every single day and you've been a couch potato for the past few years, let's let's start with tomorrow. How about tomorrow <laughs> you do 20 minutes of just going outside for a walk? How about you start with that and um, just creating those smaller goals? But anyways, back to your question. The first thing that I have my clients do is track their time because so many people say that they don't have time. In fact, that's the number one excuse that I hear from people. And when in reality, it's bullshit. It's just a self-limiting belief. Yeah. Everybody in the world has the same 24 hours and everybody in the world makes time for what they believe and money, makes the time and the money for what they believe that their priorities are. So if you say you don't have time, that's not true. If it was a priority, you would have time for it. If your kid got sick and had to go to the hospital, it doesn't matter what is on your schedule. You are going to take your kid. You right. have time for your priorities. So I just want people to understand that. So if they say they don't have time for these things that they tell me are their priorities, like they want to get in shape, they want to sleep better. It's like, okay, if that's your priority, you have time for it. And so let's track your time. Let's see how you are actually spending your time. Go with the Go to screen time on your phone. Like, what are you doing in the morning? First thing in the morning, nobody's bothering you. You have time to do what you want. Don't immediately check your phone. Don't scroll social media. Don't turn on the news, for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> do what you want to do in the morning. You have that time. So usually, first thing in the morning, that's your time. Nobody's going to bother you. And usually right before bed, you have control over those two spots in your life. Throughout the day, of course, depending on your job, there can be some things that come up that you don't have control over. So that's why I came up with uh, the rituals of the optimized entrepreneur video course, which goes over the 432130 method nightly ritual and the cages morning ritual. Because I believe if you can take control of those two times throughout your day, even if the middle of your day goes to shit and you get nothing productive done, at least you won the morning and at least you're going to have a good night so you can sleep well and win the next morning. Yeah, I like the bookends on that. Yeah. That's the, that's like you go to bed happy, wake up happy. You know, what happens during the middle, just enjoy it as much as you possibly can. Some of it's out of your control, but you can control the the bookends. That's really in, that's that's good. I like that a lot actually. I always say brush your teeth first. You know, before you could do anything else, just at least brush your teeth and at least you know you did something for yourself and it comes from an old movie i watched um where uh the it was like pow's and they were in this camp and then the guys who ended up surviving the camp itself were the ones who kept shaving kept hygiene up they were able to entertain themselves mm -hmm. um you you couldn't you couldn't stop them from just entertaining themselves somehow. Um, and those were the ones who were able to survive the, those situations. And I'm always thinking about that, like, cause that's what we're all doing. We're all trying to survive. We're all trying to be happy. And what are the, like, whenever it all comes down to it, to like the most basic, as long as you can get some quick, dirty wins and keep yourself entertained, like that seems like a pretty good recipe. And then we can work to optimize for sure. Well, like here's that. this. I, I don't even brush my teeth in the morning. Are you serious? I'm serious. I don't. So I only counter, brush my teeth once a day. You counter me. Yeah. So instead, I, I do do oral care first thing in the morning. So to your uh -huh. point, I, I do start off with that. But it's not brushing my teeth. Instead, I do what's called oil pooling. Oh, so okay. Yep. Have you heard of that? Yeah. Yeah. Dude, so that's I'm what into, I do. I'm into some pretty wicked extra virgin olive oil, too. I like know that you can do like oil pooling. Yeah. So like, cause you're doing the, like the swishing back and forth, right? Yeah. I use coconut oil. Yeah. I've heard of coconut oil and I've done, I've done that as well. Um, but yeah, I do some extra virgin olive oil too. And it's, it's been um, unreal. Is that, it's not like too spicy because good extra virgin olive oil has got that. Spice yeah. Some of it. it's spicy, but I like that. Um, okay. Yeah. I, but you can get it. So that's something that I went down whenever I was listening to Ben Greenfield fitness. Have you ever listened to him? 
he's one of my biggest inspirations where I get all of my information from. Oh, really? This is basically my Bible. Boundless oh, his book. Yeah. 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 Well, he had um he had TJ TJ uh the holistic dentist. No, TJ something. TJ Robinson, I, I believe is his name. And he's called the olive oil hunter. And oh, I heard that episode. Great episode. Yeah. Well, I got on to TJ's um oil the program olive oil of the month or whatever. Yeah, yeah nice. I got into it. So now I get olive oil all the time. Like I got olive oil from Chile, Australia, Spain. Dude, that's sick. I, I thought about doing that and now I, I might actually pull the trigger because that it's sounds so amazing. worth it. It is so worth it. Um, the, just the flavor whenever you're cooking with it. I'm sure that you cook all the time. Like unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, it's wow. incredible. But yeah, so you do oil pulling. L explain your method because I haven't done it in a long time. Um, but explain what that is because I'm sure a lot of my listeners don't know what that is. Yeah, so basically it's just <laughs> you swish around oil in your mouth for 10 to 15 minutes and then spit it out. So why I use coconut oil uh, first thing in the morning is because it's naturally antimicrobial and, and antibacterial. So it it's basically like a natural mouthwash, essentially. And so I, I swish that around in my mouth in the morning um, for I, I do it for about 12 minutes, because that's uh, the time that I, I wear these, um, these earbuds that emit light into my ears to help my circadian rhythm to wake me up because I wake up super early. Uh, I wake up at 4 a.m. when um, my chronobiology is um, a bear chronotype. And this is a whole nother topic. But basically, based on my chronobiology, I should be waking up with the sunrise, which is around 6.45 to 7 a.m. But I don't like waking up that late. If I wake up that late, I feel lazy. So I wake up very early. And to help with that, because there's no sunlight out, I put in these... Uh, earbuds, which are, it's called the human charger and it's got a 10 minute timer on it. And so once that goes off, I know to, to get out and spit out the coconut oil. You want to make sure you spit it out. Don't swallow because that's all the nasty bacteria in there. So spit it out, rinse out your mouth. And then I chug some water. Nice. I've never done it for that long. I didn't know it was supposed to be that long. Yeah. I would say 10 minutes is probably like the the minimum. Yeah. I've been doing it wrong forever then. Damn. <laughs> I, I mean who knows i might be wrong so it yeah depends i just on where you i just did it I, I would do it quickly and then that was it oh yeah i don't think i, I don't think a, a swish is is it no, i think I it's mean, gotta like, be not sitting quickly in there. i was talking like maybe a minute like a regular mouthwash like 45 seconds to a minute and mm. then gone mm. yeah but yeah to each his own i like so you yeah you're definitely a ben, ben greenfield guy because you're into the uh, the red lights and all of that. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, I have a red light as well. I have, I am really interested because like he has a lot of cool studies and gadgets and, and, you know, not, I don't want to call them gadgets. Like they, like they don't work, but like his red light therapy sessions and what it does for testosterone has opened my eyes, you yeah. know, like, I mean, he has tangible evidence that it works. Well, let me give you some real tangible, immediate evidence. So I have uh, a mini or it's not, a, it's the Juve, the Juve Go. So it's yeah. the small one. So it's portable. So I, can, I take it with me wherever I go. And uh, you can, this is like a, one of the, the best hacks you can do for sexual performance is right before sex, you can lay down. I like to meditate. If you have a mat or you can sit up doing it, put it on your balls. Mm -hmm. And it is amazing. You get this instant blood flow because what the red light does is it dilates your blood vessels. And so if you put it on your balls and everything that's going on down there, obviously that rush of blood flow to the area is going to be an immediate performance enhancer. And it's, it's game changer. It's, it's basically like Viagra. Yeah, that's what I've heard. I've never done the red light therapy, but I know that whenever he has talked about it, I mean, he does the therapy sessions and then he's just like, yeah, it, it, it works. It does. So I do that um, sometimes twice a day, maybe once in the morning and then and usually before bed mm -hmm. and then uh, sometimes full body 
light panels, like front and back red light panels. Um, and that's, that's even better. Like if you can do full body, that's great. And so I go to a place that uh, my girlfriend works at called restore and they have okay. full body red light panels. Nice. Really good for muscular recovery, uh, repairing, uh, sunburns, any type of, you know, skin damage. So what does the red light do? What, like, I know it's based on the wavelength of the actual red light because of the, like the spectrum, it, it helps somehow. Is it because it's so, it, the wave itself is fast that it can deeply penetrate? Is that why? Yeah. So I can't really tell you the science behind it. Um, I know that it helps with mitochondria. I know that it helps with energy production that way by, mm -hmm. I don't know, stimulating the mitochondria. Um, but how it works for muscular recovery is I think primarily via blood flow because, you know, when you get hurt or if you're super sore, the, uh, the common advice is just to, you know, relax, stay still, take it easy. That's actually the opposite of what you should be doing. You want to I get agree. up and move to get the blood flowing. And so this red light can significantly help with that. Um, and you don't have to be like, you don't have to actually move for it to invigorate somewhere. Like sometimes you have to like be moving physically, but it hurts. So you don't want to move. And that's why like this red light therapy would assist with that because it's, you don't have to move, but you're, you're invigorating it like you would be if you were, let's say, massaging it of some sort. Yeah. And it would be full body. Too. Yeah. Um, and then for like how it heals sunburns, like I can't tell you that, mm -hmm. uh, but I know it does. And even if you don't have a red light panel, if you get sunburned, get exposure to the sunset because that's the same frequency of red light. So that helps as well. Yeah. It's something that I've learned through photography and through my, my day job of selling infrared cameras is the wavelength of colors and the, the spectrum has drastic effects on us. Um, that's why I'm really interested whenever you're talking about the human charger and the red light therapy. Um, it sounds a little bit wild, but it it's really not in like, even if you think about how animals are and why they sleep on certain sides of the mountain, it's because of the, these things that, that mm -hmm. we're talking about. Um, the, they get it. They understand it. Um, the circadian rhythms and, and the, like the, the wavelengths of the sun and all of these things there, it sounds really wild and out there, but whenever you learn the science and you actually look at some of the data points, it's like, like Ben Greenfield, for instance, has done the data points. Like he's able to study all of this in a, in a really intricate way. Um, so I've, I've been a fan of his for a long time and, um, I'm glad that I found a fellow Ben Greenfield oh, yeah. fan. For and sure. I, I think you brought up one of the major problems in society is that these things that we're talking about right now, they do sound kind of, you know, weird and out there and crazy. And that is the problem because we've gotten mm -hmm. so far away from, from the natural being. world. Yeah. Like we've gotten the so far away. Shit. Yes. And it's crazy because <sighs> I, I don't want to get it's happened too... so fast. It's happened so fast within the past like 50 years. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you can even look at like, you can look at old newspapers and see holistic medicine. That's how and now it. it's like, now it's like frowned upon. Like if you go Super to a holistic doctor, upon. like, are you crazy? Like, what is wrong with you? you mm -hmm. know? Oh, I know. And sometimes, yeah, I do look at people that do it like to the full extreme. And I'm like, ah, like whenever you say like a broken leg, I, some, some, there's some other things that you should go to a doctor for too. And, you know, we don't have to get into that today, but mm -hmm. it's like, not everything is holistic in terms of like treatment. There's some things that, you know, you need to go see a doctor and maybe you can do holistic, but um, it's probably optimal to, to get it treated by Western medicine. However, I'd say 90% of what we treat on a daily basis could probably done with uh, a healthy diet and active lifestyle and healthy relationships. If you can get those and, and I think we're going to do sleep on there too. I'm going to add that because once you have those prongs, you're good. You're good. Like you said, you're not going to die from a 
one of these one of these ailments that you get because you are obese or you're inactive, you know, you're sedentary and, and those types of things. So like, yeah, I, I think the redefinition of what it means to be healthy and the redefinition of of uh, like your your mental health and your physical health are things to be considered moving forward. Mm-hmm. And also. We, we mentioned obesity, don't think just because somebody is skinny means that they're healthy. Or even don't think that just because somebody is ripped and has muscles in a six pack, that that means they're healthy. That absolutely does not mean that they're healthy either. Health is internal. Yep. They're you physically can, healthy, maybe. Yeah. And you can tell a lot by looking at someone like, obviously, if you're overweight, this whole body positivity thing, like I'm all for loving who you are and accepting that as long as you're, you know, you're trying to become better, but don't try to say that that's healthy. Because it is, it is not healthy. You cannot be overweight and be optimally healthy. It just, you can't, but same thing. You can't be skinny and be healthy. And even if you're ripped, that doesn't mean that you're healthy. Health is internal. And so like, even if, um, there's somebody who's not overweight and they're, they have what's called like skinny fat, you know, like not being fat, but being skinny but with low muscle mass, mm. that is also very unhealthy. And then internally, you can have a lot of health issues like chronic stress. Um, you know, <laughs> I would say that's probably the, the big one that people are facing right now is just different forms of stress from, I don't know, losing their job, relationship well, I issues. Think it's, because, and it's also uh, just personal, personal things that they put on themselves, personal expectations that they put on themselves that may- a lot of it that may not even be fair to themselves. They may be holding themselves to a very, very high expectation when they don't need to. Like, I know I've gone through that where you hold yourself to this ridiculous expectation and then you get pissed at yourself because you didn't hold up the bargain. And then it goes down this cycle of like, oh, well, now I'm just a POS. And it's like, nah, dude, like you were, you did damn good. You know, you're whatever. You know, you, you got to this level. Okay. So now let's recalibrate. Like once you start going down that path of oh, I'm a shithead, blah, blah, blah. Ah, let's pump the brakes. Okay. We did fine. Yeah. We slipped up whatever, but we're not, we're not done yeah. that type of thing. Like, and then the unrealistic expectations I think that people have for themselves um, is, is, is tough. And I, and I think that if we were a little bit more self-loving and realistic about what we can actually do, and that's why I love that you say that you have your folks track their time first, because what can you realistically do if you think out your week? Because if you think it out and you, you have that option now, now you know what you can do. Now you're in control. Now you're back in control. You're driving the car. And that's the important part to me, I think, is like you said, and, and I, I'm like, I'm saying like you said, because like you're in my head right now is like whenever you do the bookends of things and you can, you control what you can control. Okay. You, if you try to control those other parts of your day that are totally outside of your control, you're going to be miserable. So here's another exercise. I think your, your listeners will like, I call it the circle of concern exercise. I I didn't come up with this, so I can't take Mm -hmm. uh, ownership of it, but basically first you want to define every single thing that you're concerned about, what you heard on the news, what your friends tweeted at you, what your kids are doing in school, like everything that you're possibly concerned about, what you're going to eat that night, whatever, make a list. And then once you make that list, make a list of out of those things, what you have influence over. So what you saw in the news, you don't have any influence over that. What your kids are doing at school, you have some influence over that. Okay, so write that on the influence list, what you're going to eat for dinner tonight, you have influence over that. Okay, so narrow it down. It should be a big list of what you're concerned about, then a medium sized list of what you have influence over. And then out of those things that you have influence over, put a separate list of everything that you have direct control over. And this is going to be a very small list Mm. because you find out that you really only have control over yourself, your thoughts and your actions. 
So you might have a very big influence over what your kids are doing at school, but ultimately you cannot control another human being. So you do not have control, direct control over your kids, right? That, that might be difficult for a lot of people to hear, but the, the food, for example, you always, always, always have 100% control over what you put into your body unless, okay, 99% chance, unless you're being tied down and physically forced through, force fed through a tube, you know, but for the majority of people in normal human life, you always have control over what you consume, even if that option is nothing. People tell me all the time, oh yeah, I'm trying to eat healthier, but then they brought in donuts to the office and I just, I had to, it's like, okay, well, and, and that was the only thing to eat. Okay, well, the option of not eating is also a very fantastic option. Most of the times it's probably a better option so then we can get into the benefits of fasting. But back to the control, you find out that you only have control over a, a small subset of, of things in your life and then really start to think about it. So another example I give is traffic. If people get upset that they're in traffic, okay, you, you can't control that there is traffic. But what you can control is what time you leave. You could try to understand what is the busy time of day. You could look for an alternate route. You could leave earlier. And then even if you are stuck in traffic, you could reframe your mindset from this sucks to this is awesome. I can now use this time to listen to a podcast and learn something, right? So going back to what you said, a lot of the stress people are just putting on themselves and it, it can be all gone if you start to reframe your mindset, just like that example. It's, it's not necessarily 100%. easy. It's not going to happen overnight, but it's so worth it. It's just, it's simple problem solving skills is really what it all boils down to. Uh, and I think that if we can, if we can optimize our ability to in the moment problem solve and be able to under, not understand, but rather call to our ultimate goal in those moments is the, is the magic. If you, if you can in the moment, boom, okay, pull from there. This is how I need to react. Okay, here we go. I'm not in control. I am in control. And then we can work that out. I think that's a fantastic mindset. And man, dude, I could talk to you all day long, all day long. Okay. Right now I got to digest what we just did. <laughs> I'd like to have a round two. If you, if you would be so kind at some point, I know that your, your schedule is busy. Let's table it for today. If, if that's all right with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where can they, where can they find more stuff about you at? I just want to say the last thing that I'll say is the fastest way to get control of your stress response is to breathe. So once mm -hmm. you control your breathing, you control your body's stress response. So I would say the easiest way to start is a double inhale through the nose and then a long exhale, either through the nose or through the mouth. That is the fastest way that I found just a singular breath. <sighs> Even right there, I, I feel better. So try that when you're stuck in traffic, stressful situation, double inhale, slow exhale. Try Thank that. You. All right. Now where you can find me, uh, basically just search the captain's lifestyle. Um, I'm basically there everywhere. My website, my podcast, uh, Instagram, my personal Instagram is captain underscore cap or captain underscore Taylor underscore Morgan. So those are the main places you can find me. If you want to know more about the uh, the four three two one thirty method, you can download it for free at info.thecaptainslifestyle.com. Yep, I already got mine in my in my email right now. So, all right, brother, thank you, Taylor. Appreciate your time. I'm gonna go binge. Uh, I'm gonna go binge listen to all your shit. So, <laughs> awesome, Ronald. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. As always, guys, take care and enjoy the journey. Have a great day, guys.